Hi, everyone. I'm Tracy Hazard. This is the Apoditize Certified Strategist Info Session. And we are going to kind of review some of the things that uh, are why we might want to be certified strategists, why we want to move our coaching business into something bigger, something more supported. Um, and then after that, we'll open everything up to questions. So you can type questions in the chat. And I really encourage you to type, you know, responses in the chat, because I'm going to be asking you questions. Some of them are rhetorical, but feel free to answer anyway. Um, but I'm going to do that all along the way as I um, review some things with you. And, and we go over the idea of what a certified strategist program looks like. So as I mentioned, we're going to be talking about creating a profitable podcast coaches, coaching business, and we call that the Podetized Certified Strategist. We're talking about the success path here. What does that look like? What is the success path for you? Um, you know, how many of you have already attended um, one of our events? So sort of heard one of the precursors to the talks before. Um, just go ahead and type in the chat. Yes. Um, a why, whatever you want. Um, but let me know if you've attended it. Ah, okay, great. So we have some people who were at She Podcast. That was recent. Um, if you've seen me on anything else like Outliers or any other virtual conferences, just type that in the chat of stuff as well. So, okay. Thank you so much for responding. I appreciate that. So now I know you guys are there. Um, so there's going to be a couple of review points here, but for the most part, um, this, there's a lot of new information here as well. Um, we're going to have, as I mentioned, questions at the end. And, um, and if you have questions as you're going on, uh, Raffi Wagner is monitoring our chat here and she will let me know if you if there's anything that I need to stop in the middle because you can't hear me or something's going on like that. But in the meantime, we're going to proceed forward with talking about creating a profitable podcast coaching business and what that looks like for you. So a lot of you have this overwhelming feeling. I hear it all the time from all of my clients. Uh, there's so much to do um, in regards to your podcast. You got to get guests. You have your editorial calendar. You know, there's all these different things that you have in producing your podcast, never mind producing a business, right? As we're growing and scaling a business, we've got, we have all these issues of attracting clients, figuring out how to lead, figuring out how to wear closing. Our, is our sales good enough? Do we need to up our sales game? We have to figure out all of those things in the process of being able to go through and build a really good and valuable business. And when we're doing that, we sometimes get into this overwhelm stage. Plus, we also find it harder and harder to compete. So it means we have to do more, which stresses us out even more because there's usually only one of us when we're starting these things up, right? And really right now, it's really hard to compete with the established players. Spotify is dumping hundreds of millions of dollars into the industry and giving this false sense of value. So everyone and their brother wants to jump into the podcasting business um, and you know, starting a business and building a business and growing a business is not the same as servicing a business, right? So we find when we're, when we're in our business and we're growing it and we're doing all of these things, we're not working on our business and we're having less and less time to actually coach the clients that we've got in our process. So this is what we're going to talk about today is how we can remove some of these overwhelms and what kinds of things in this, in this sort of all this to-do list we've got going on that is creating fail points for us, things that will cause us to fail in this business, because it is really hard to replicate growth year after year. And that's why I personally make it a practice to start new podcasts every year. Um, the newest podcast right now is the next little thing. That's the one on the, the bright red one on, on your screen there and the newest cover art. And I do it every year because it's not the same today as it was six years ago. And we have to understand how the market dynamics are changing, what all of that is. Can you imagine that yourself, you know, doing this and having your podcast that you have today and then starting new ones all the time. You know, I'm lucky I have a big team now. I can't afford the time to do this. In fact, it's built into my job. But, you know, how many of you are already coaches, consultants, editors, or managers? How many of you already have a client? Type the number of clients you've already done if this is already a part of your job. If you've already coached people, if you've already been consulting with people, just type into the chat how many. Okay, so we've got someone with two. Um, and you know, 
it, have they launched yet is also a question. So if you've launched them since say two launched or one launched, give us an, a sense of, you know, how many of that is. If you haven't had a client yet, just type new into the chat. Uh, we've got someone who's got more clients than she can count. And we've got one that's launched. Wonderful. So that's great. You know, what if you could be absolutely sure that you could live in the best part of what you've done? This because now you've launched one. You know where some of the stress points, you know where the hard points are. But what if you could live in the best part, the part you enjoy the most, the advising clients, the interactions, the strategy, the brainstorming, like that's my favorite part. Um, you know, that actual advising part. What if you could live in that, but still be able to give them all the support they need throughout their podcasting journey, making sure that they get launched without taking up tons of your time or eating into that really hard to find profitability. Would that be worth hearing? That's what we're going to talk about today. So our belief is that the whole independent portion of the industry should band together because Spotify is focusing only on the elite. So is iHeart. So is Amazon. All of them are only on the elite. And that ruins podcasting for everyone because there are so many left behind. That's why we have this horrendously bad industry pod fade rate of 80%. 75 to 80%, depending on the numbers that you check. Last time I heard it was somewhere around 500,000 active podcasts, but the latest number I heard was closer to 350,000. And that's back where we were over a year ago. So I really believe in businesses that defy the odds. I believe when we're bootstrapped, when we're on our own, when we're independents, we have no choice but to defy the odds of the industry, defy the odds of our niche, defy the odds in the marketplace. We have to do that. Podetize does that today. We already have a less than 8% pod fade rate with our clients over the last year and a half. And we really believe strongly that that's the clincher. That's what keeps clients coming back again and again and referring more people, keeps them continuing to podcast. We've launched over a hundred, uh, over a thousand shows we've launched and we do tens of thousands of podcast episodes every single month. So we are editing and producing and doing all these things. So we're seeing what's working and what's not working across the industry. And our belief is that we must share that with you so that we can all lift this boat together and rise the tide. We can't support solopreneurs and new podcasters alone and that's why you're here today. We want to bring that integrity back into prod podcasting. Podcasters that really can stick with it, defy the odds along with us, create this repeatable success because the industry can't be filled with service providers and hosting companies that only care about enrollment and someone doing one episode. That's not okay. And I heard that at a recent PodFest event. You know, but there is so much going on right now. You know, there's an urgency to what's going on. We're getting frozen in the industry. Some of us are getting frozen out and some of us are getting, you know, uh, locked in. And I'll explain that in a minute. But, you know, how many of you started providing podcast coaching services within the last year to two? So from 2020 to 2021, how many of you just started coaching services within those years? Just type yes in the chat or type me. In that time, our industry has tripled and it is moving so fast that those getting started are frozen. You're stuck in slow-mo and you may not even realize it. You are going to start finding it incredibly hard to compete without the large capital team, without a large capital investment, and that's going to freeze your growth pace. And so you're starting this business in earnest over the last year and a half to two years. And you're thinking, I can make this. I've got all the skills. I've got everything that I can do. I, I, know, how to, I know how to get a client's success. But the reality is, is the industry is freezing you out and locking you out of that. When we first started podcasting eight years ago, it was so easy to podcast. Um, and then when we started Podetize six years ago, it was so much easier to build as you go. But today it's not. You have to have some built-in infrastructure because you're competing against so many big guys in this world. You know, here's Tom and I. If you haven't met us before, this is uh, my partner and husband, Tom Hazard. We are the Podetize founders. Um, we started this business because so many clients asked us. They just asked us to do it. 
I personally host six podcasts. Those are some of the ones right there. Product Launch Hazards, The Bin Factor, Feed Your Brand, The Next Little Thing. But our very first podcast was called WTFFF, and it was about 3D printing. Uh, there's also the New Trust Economy, which isn't up there. Um, I The Binge Factor and Feed Your Brand are the podcasts for you guys. They're the ones that shine a light on how podcasting actually works, how you can find success in there. And if you're new to my network, I'm known for being that podcasting expert. I'm known for being an ink columnist on innovation, but I'm known for being that podcast industry expert who tells it like it actually is. And I'm known for starting a new podcast every year so that I can be right in the trenches along with my clients and I can find that fast path to success today not the one that happened yesterday. So after Tom and I cracked the code on podcasting and we built our podcasting business and we know exactly what it takes to create repeatable success and a business that becomes more and more profitable with less and less work and less and less of that overwhelm. So as I mentioned, we started our first podcast, WTFFF 3D printing. Um, that was six, uh, seven years ago when we started that podcast. And we had in that process, uh, you know, found it actually a ton easier. We ended up going from zero to 25,000 listeners within five months. We got featured in Forbes and we had a lot of people asking us, what are you doing? why are you podcasting and what is it doing for your business? And for us, what we really found was that it was doing an incredible amount for authority building. It was doing an incredible amount of traffic for a website. And those people were demanding us to do business. However, Tom and I didn't really want to do that 3D print business. So at the end of the day, we just, that wasn't what we were in it for. And so when clients, when people who became our clients started saying, whatever you're doing, will you teach me how to do it? And when I would say, well, here's what you do, they would look at me and they'd say, Tracy, that's too much. Can I just give you my credit card? And can you do this for me? This is probably pretty similar to what people are doing to you today, right? And they shoved their credit cards at me. And that's actually how we got our first 10 clients. So we started out with this 10 client beta group. We had a team um, uh, and we, we really have, um, and we really have, had the ability to scale, but at that time we didn't, right? We didn't have any systems. We didn't have any processes. We didn't have anything we could do beyond just having the small team that did what we did. And then what happened was, is that those clients started referring us to more clients. Within one year, we had found, we had grown our team. We had to build systems on the fly and we had gone from 10 to 101 year. And that was all on referrals, but it was also really stressful. You know, we realized we couldn't sustain it like a side hustle. We had to take the company and spin it off into a new entity that is today called Brandcasters, which holds the, the trademark for Podetize and the Podetize system. Um, we also did a lot of things wrong, really, at various points. We had to learn how to manage clients, manage the process, putting all proper terms and conditions so we didn't get chargebacks and we didn't get hurt when clients flaked out, which happened at that time. We had learned all about pod fading. We had to really correct course and build in systems to prevent pod fading. And we learned exactly what it was going to take to become profitable and be a leader in the marketplace. And so what our goal at that time was to hit a million dollars. And we realized we were going to have to invest really heavily in both technology, team, and money and time, like all of those things together. But through all that, while we were investing and while we were growing, you know, it was really difficult to get clients through the process fast. Um, it exploded all our services and times and cost. And we were at that common point in a business where you know you have to dump in lots of capital or a lot of sleepless nights. Um, you know, to really train the team, build the systems, oversee it, find all the fail points, make sure we're on top of everything, make sure we don't lose touch with our clients. Um, and that the personal touch that they had re become accustomed to at 10, we didn't lose them when we came, when we went to a thousand. Um, it took us 18 months and over $250,000 from our own salary for us to build that onboarding and publishing portal that today is podetized and for us to hit that million dollar mark. Um, we lost a lot of sleep, almost lost a lot of clients and a lot of revenue too, but it was really the strength of the process, our software and the success 
we had been providing clients all along that really made us successful during this time period and helped us build all of this. And that is that 2X number that you see right there on the screen. Our 2X number is the number that we have of clients that refer to us, that refer us. So for every single client we have, they refer us to two more who close and become new clients. And that's just on average. We have clients who never pay for their podcast, never pay for um, the production of what they do because they refer, you know, so many clients to us all year long that they get all of their episodes for free. And I am so grateful for all those clients. I am absolutely grateful that they are all there um, and really have built our business for us. So we really had to spend zero dollars so far up to this point on marketing and lead generating for our business. The leads have just flowed in, allowing us to hit that wonderful thousand client mark. Now we know we can't 10 X that because this is only a two X number. So if we just felt comfortable with doubling in the next year, then we would leave it alone, but we don't. So at this point, we're starting to add marketing funds in. We are fueling that so that we can have a 10 X growth year over year. And our goal is to hit 10,000 users by the end of 2022. And that in and of itself, we have the bandwidth to do this. We also have the capital to do this because we have this great base that pays for all our overhead, pays for all the systems that we're running on. So everything we do in marketing gets dumped back into it and we can reinvest in that. You may not be at that pace, but this allows us to compete against iHeart and other players in the marketplace. And for us, we've actually launched more shows than iHeart Radio. We're really proud of that. It's made us the largest production company in the world, post-production company. Uh, we don't do that pre-production piece that iHeart does, but they're obviously re not really good at it because they fall into that same industry pod fade rate. And out of the, I think they had 534 shows the last time I looked. And out of those many shows, 80% of them never went past their first season. So they are already following into the pod fade rate. Out of our thousand shows, we have less than 8% who've pod faded. So we're really proud of that because that has really made us not only a great production company to work with, but we're obviously achieving success for our clients. We live in the market proof of that and that retained client base because without them, we couldn't continue to succeed. So you know, think about what your average number of touch points or closes you need to, to calls you need to close someone. What is that worth? Is that worth 5,000 or more? Um, you know, if you, if you have a client that's $5,000 or more, does it take two calls? Does it take one call? You know, we have less than two touch points with a client to close them. And that's because of these warm referrals. So I want to make sure you can get up to this referral level. And if you've only got one client, you know, your next opportunity is, could you get three? And thinking about how we can grow and move from there so that all of this is growing for you. So we want to see if we can get you to go from 10, from one to 10 to 20 or 100 or 200 clients yourself. What could you do? Where would you be if you had the solution? If the goal of this program that I'm presenting with you today is an opportunity to skip the learning curve, get right into what resonates with potential clients access the systems and processes that will support those clients and create a successful referral network that's going to give you more, more, more leads, more profits, more freedom. And we're going to talk a little bit about those lead side in a little bit, because when we have a profitable model and we've insulated our business from lots of risks, I'm going to call them profit pitfalls, which is what we're going to talk about in a minute. Those are money and time pits. We all know those because our time is more valuable than our money. Then you have less risk trying to find this path to success and you are more likely to make it. So let's talk about these profit pitfalls. Now, some of them I touched on when I gave recent presentations, but I've added some more here. There's seven profit pitfalls that I'm going to talk about today. Um, these are the things we found out to be common problems that those of you building a coaching business will struggle with. Some of them are the tipping point to huge failure. They're, they're business uh, they're business crashers, right? They fail the business. And some of them are simply the types of things that you know have a slow boil. They're the things that keep on going over time. And then over time, you realize referrals are not as prevalent as they used to be, or your lead pace or your closure rate is going down. The, those build on that. 
So while these are not necessarily in the order that you're going to face them, we're going to cover them so that you're aware of the ones that creep up on you and become problematic. So the first one that we're going to talk about is the profit pitfall of being, having the wrong fit clients. Now, in the early days, we took any client, right? If somebody referred them and they wanted to become a podcaster, we took them. We found that to be absolutely a path to sometimes not creating success for us or for them. And that having the wrong fit clients is, uh, is difficult in and of itself. So we developed a bunch of systems and processes that allow us to vet our clients. Some of it requires activity. And you're going to see that at the end of this presentation when I tell you what the next step is for you. Sometimes we require clients to take the next step instead of following up on them on purpose. And I know some of you out there who listen to those gurus who are going like, oh, no, you have to inundate them with a me email after email after email. And I say, we found that to be the wrong process. We found that to get us the wrong kind of people. We found it to get a lot of people who were willing to spend a little bit of money, but they were not willing to do the work that it took. And all of you out there who are podcasters, and I know almost all of you are, that it requires some work on your part. You can't record for your clients. If they're not going to show up and record, they're not going to make it. So we required some steps in the process. These are some of the things we built in, some of the things that I want to share with you because we want to make sure that these clients don't sneak through your process and zap your energy, zap all the attention that you have because that's what happened with them. Or they, in the end, don't give you what you need in these early days, those, those great referrals and the ability to say, I have a success and a great testimonial because they never give you those at the end of the day. So that's what I want to do for you. But I also want to make sure that you find in this process that this business isn't a wrong fit for you. You know, if you don't love that client interface process, if you don't love the sales and closing process of it, maybe this part of the business isn't for you. And maybe you need an alternative route. Maybe you need somebody to do the lead generation for you and bring you clients. Maybe you need a different style position. Maybe you need a different style business. So that's also something I want you to look at as you go forward. The next profit pitfall is failure to launch. And this is, you know, obviously there's lots of businesses that fail to launch. The biggest um, failure in businesses launching is market product fit, right? We know here because we've been through that strat, you know, that, that, that tough period where you aren't sure if you're going to succeed or not, because we've surpassed our third year in business and we, you know, we're on to our fifth actually. So, you know, when we pass that period, we know we have the formula for product market fit. We absolutely know that that's right for us, but you may not, you may not have that in place, but your clients don't either. They don't know if podcasting is going to be right for them or not. And so there's this high risk of failure to launch if we get the wrong fit clients or we sell them on something that they're really not ready for. This is where we have over enrollment, right? We, we start to can, you know over enroll them into something they're really not ready for yet. And that can happen too. If we fail to launch, it has a cascading effect in the growth of our business. Because if we fail to launch those clients, then they don't refer people to us. And then we also have to follow up and spend a lot of energy trying to get them to launch, which is what you will do, trust me, because you don't like a failure on your hands. None of us do. And you'll spend all this time trying to reinvigorate them, trying to hold them accountable, trying to force them into, you know, really doing something that they really are. It's not a good fit for them. And they just don't, they just didn't realize it before. And it's more and more costly for you, the more and more time that it takes. So now we're spending too much time, too much money coordinating launch assets for people, helping them get launched. And we're at a high risk for refund and chargebacks. Even though you've done all this work and put that in, that's what happens. And even though it's on them, it's always going to feel like it's absolutely on you. The next thing is it is all on you, right? That's what's happening when we're in these early phases of our business is that you're in your business. You're not working on your business. So what are you going to do when you want to grow that business? Who is going to be you in that future version of your business? And are your clients going to accept the team that you put in place? Are you going to be able to train that team and still service clients and grow your business? You know, this is a really high touch business. You cannot digital course your way to, to running a podcast consulting business, a coaching business, a strategy business. You can't write a book and expect successful clients. We have a boot camp. We offer it for free. 
And for every hundred people that come through that, that course, about 10 make it through. And it's not because not everything we do is contained in that course. It is because everything we do is contained in that course. And it's too much for most people. Out of those 10 people that come through and successfully launch a podcast, the rare one to two do it themselves and do an amazing job with it. Almost all of the ones that do it themselves pod fade at the industry rate. But the, there's a good handful of those people, about 50% of them, instead of doing the boot camp come to us and say, Hey, I can't do this anymore. Can you help me podcast? Can you help me produce this? Can you help me do all the, all the editing? Can you handle this portion for me? So I love podcasting. I want to keep going, but all I can do is do the recording portion. And so they go and they get help from us. That's our purpose for our boot camp. But what we found in that process is no matter how much we promote, promoted it, we couldn't get the number up of people who would actually successfully turn out a podcast beyond 10 people. Like we just couldn't get it up beyond 10 out of every hundred because there's too much complexity and you can't teach it all. And if you don't teach it all, then they're, out, they're not successful. And so they fail from the start. They don't get immediate gratification and it doesn't work for him. And there's multiple skill sets involved in podcasting properly. You guys know that, right? There's not just the speaking into the microphone portion. Somebody has to figure out how to record, has to figure out how to get it up into a portal. They have to do all of those things that sometimes they're not really great at. They they need support in that process. So most of our clients and most of yours can't do without the personal touch or they wouldn't be seeking us in the first place. It's like, this is why you come into the process. And it's precisely why we're starting this new strategy strategist program, why we're starting a certification program. So we can train coaches to expand the type of help. We can't bring our every client that comes to us. I'm not an expert in fitness. I'm not a parenting expert, although I have three really trying daughters, but maybe you are. And wouldn't it be great to be able to use that core specialty, what you do best and be able to prove, to use a proven system and be able to make sure that your clients are successful out of it. Because as we always say here at Potatize, hope is not a plan and it's not a strategy. It can't all be on you. That leads me to number four. Number four of our profit pitfalls is our low value offer. We see it all the time when clients come to us with an overly generic show that came completely templated. Um, sometimes there's, you know, there's lots of AI popping up that says they're going to help people figure out things. Um, I just saw one about an AI that helps you write your headlines. I tried it out and I can't even believe how bad the headline turned out. It sounded like word soup. It was just awful. Yeah. It's packing keywords in there, but it's not attractive to a listener at all. So, you know, there's a lot of that out there and that's what we consider to be these low value offers, the books, the courses, those kinds of things. And what comes out of them is generic. What comes out of wonderful strategists and coaches are really great podcasts that work for people's business, that are really personal, that the, your clients then can continue to podcast because it fits core to what they're doing. This is where you need to find your niche. You need to find something. We have many people migrate to us um, when they found out their coach was doing things like the same voiceover for every single client, even though they were paying for a $25,000 package. So they were getting the same voiceover on every, the same music. So, the, and it wasn't because the coach was being cheap about that. What we found out when we investigated and, and discovered it was just that she was too busy. She was too busy to go through the whole process of making sure that everybody got something unique. So she was just giving that she got more and more cookie cutter as it went on. And especially at these high ticket prices, which a lot of you might not, but might be wanting to charge. This is an opportunity where they expect exclusivity. They expect personal touch. And so, you know, it's easy for us now but it wasn't, it was years in the making. And, you know, we had, we had a lot of sunken costs, as I mentioned before, learning what was working and what didn't. But today, Podetize is known as the one-stop high value source. Not only do we provide the strategy piece, we have 97 staff members around the world, including uh, eight here in the US. We do video, audio, blog, social assets, Plus we have hosting, plus we have ad mixing. So we've got all of these things in one place and it makes it so easy. And our, we don't only just do strategy, we also provide 
post support. We provide weekly group coaching and all of those other things in that process to keep people podcasting. We found this as a part of our program. So that's our core value for, formula. And our, our, at the end, we call it record, upload, done for our clients. You know, where are you going to find it? Where are you going to find your pricing that can't be beat for all that it includes? You know, we provide this program for $179 an episode and $49 a month for hosting. So it's very low cost to people, but where are you going to find your niche, your price? And, you know, for us, this isn't a loss leader. We've dialed in the systems. We have automations. We have all the things that work that make this profitable for us. But that front end piece of launching is still elusive because it's different for every client. And while we can systematize all the process of asset creation, all the things like that, the amount of time you need to strategize and spend with a client is pretty determined by what they need to achieve and how much of it they already have in place. And you can't know that until you get started with them. So that key front end strategy piece is key to our multiplier, right? Really getting more and more clients through the process. And it's going to be key for you because it is actually what you provide. So finding your core value finding your niche on where you play in that strategy piece is going to be essential. And when you do that and you get successful clients and your clients go out there and keep podcasting, then we all win in this, po in this podcasting industry. And that's the, the real part of what we want. So this is a niche area. Yes, but it's a core value area of what you, we want you to look for and what we want you to find so that you end up with the right podcasters doing the right podcast and motivated to not only launch, but to continue podcasting. Because we all know there's so much authority and value in podcasting, which does bring me to my number five pitfall, which is that the one most often objection people have to working with you is that they don't know you yet. They don't know you're an authority in the industry. They don't know um, too much about you. So they'll investigate you, right? You know, maybe you were referred by someone. That's actually really great. It's the best way because if a friend had success with you, I trust that friend. Therefore, I trust you. But when you don't have those referrals built in, you don't have the absolute process to set in place the ability to keep that authority building happening for you or that authority association happening for you. So you need to build it. So what are people going to do when they aren't sure about you, when they don't know you yet, when you're just sending out emails, putting advertisements on Facebook, whatever it is you're doing, what they're going to do is they're going to Google podcast experts, or they're going to, you know, look around for where the most advice is and most of the publications. And you know what they're going to find? They're going to find John Lee Dumas, Pat Flynn, and they're going to find me. And I don't say that to be conceited. I say that because I have an eight-year jump start on you. I've been doing this longer. I have more publications out there. I post articles three to four a week out in other publications. So there's a lot of process that's creating this authority and credibility building. But, you know, I had to build it from scratch and you do too, unless you want to ride on someone's coattails, unless you want to do, you know, all the heavy lifting yourself, or you want to go into a place at which you can ride on someone else's authority, trade on our credibility. That's what certification is for. That's what we're going to talk about in a little, you know, in a little bit. And so you can tap into this fast, higher authority association and build your authority faster at the same time. We're going to talk about that. And when we talk about the program. So our number six profit pitfall is a lack of leads. This one I hear again and again. I put out a, um, a survey at She Podcast through the whole group that attended my talk. And this was the thing I heard again and again, that they have a lack of leads, that they don't know where to get new leads. They can only, you know, that they may only get one or two leads when they give a speech somewhere. It's not enough. There's not enough lead flow. And so, you know, and then offering it on your podcast. I know this because I have two podcasts that are for podcasters, right? And, you know, you can only go so long in the early days of relying to the listeners who want to meet you at events, who then want to become clients. You only have so many of them that are going to take action. And so that's not also a plan for ongoing lead flow success. It works in a slow pace and it does keep up that credibility building at the same time. So you do want to do it. 
but it's not necessarily, you can't rely on it to provide all that lead flow for you, especially if your podcast is not focused on talking to potential podcasters, right? So thinking about that, you know, and how many clients are going to refer you, right? Do you have enough? One X at the beginning is not enough. Do you have even two X and two X isn't really enough when you only have 10. Remember I went from 10 to hundred, which means I had 10 X of referrals at that time. And I, you can do that at a lower pace when you, you have a smaller group of people, when you're incentivizing them like I do. So we offer them five free episodes um, of production for every client that they refer to us that becomes our client. So as we did that, those, those incentives, of course, cost us money in our business. So it wasn't like we weren't paying for our leads in general. We were, but we were paying after the fact, after somebody closed and became a client. So it was like paying a commission out. We could afford that in the process. Maybe you can't. So we want to think about this flow and how we can really turn up the volume on that, how we can get it to a really high lead flow. And when you're in that pre-100 client days, there's, you know, you, you've got to think about what that way is and what's the safest way you can do it so that you don't tank your business. And we're going to talk today about a way that you can come on and get lead flow from us. So the seventh profit built pitfall um, is no continual support. And I mean this in two ways. You don't have continual support for you and your clients don't have continual support unless you build it into your program ahead of time and unless you can have the time to do it. You know, today I don't do 100% of our strategy sessions anymore. I probably do a few a month. So I have time to do that continual support. I have time to give all the speeches. I have time to be the front person for it, for our company. I have time to do six podcasts, right? I have the time to do that because I have that already built in and I can continue to provide that one-to-one -one continual support or the one-to-many continual support on an as-needed basis because it works for us. But you may not be able to do that in the early days. You may still be doing this like a side hustle. So you've got a lot of other things on the process. So it, it's very, very difficult to make sure that the continual support is there and that you've built it into your process and into, more importantly, into your profitability. And, you know, have you ever had that client who keeps messaging you long after the engagement was over? Like, no matter how many times you tried to get them to enroll in a group program, you know, or a support program, like they felt they paid you and you owe them to get the answers so that they can achieve success. This is a really common mindset. And the more you charge for your program, the more you charge for your services, the more they expect from you. But it is also the ones that pay the least that sometimes eat into the most time and profitability because they paid so little for, let's say a boot camp or something. And they can't, that's not enough to get answers. Like it's just not enough to have the custom because it's all pre-recorded. There's nothing in there. You're finding that you're spending a lot more time on those low ticket clients as well. And every minute that you spend is left less profitable dollars for us. And so often in a service-based business, we forget to track that that's not profitable. We forget to track all that time spent on post-service support. So, you know, think about your podcast this way too. You started a show years ago, you got some success, but do you know what it takes to keep achieving success? Do you have support that's going to tell you, this is what you do when Apple completely changes their whole entire portal and it's now no longer working for you? Do you have a direct connection at Apple? Do you have someone who's going to find out the answers about why you can't launch your, your client's show this week, why it won't syndicate? that happened to us in July. Luckily we had connections. We had people, we could give them updates. We talked exactly with them about what was going on and we could prep our clients. Instead, most of the people in the marketplace are on Twitter and Reddit, just screaming about the fact that they can't get any answers from Apple and they have clients who are pissed at them because their launches are delayed. And that reflects badly on you. The clients are never going to hold Apple accountable. It's just not going to happen. I wish it would, but it's not. And so do you have the ability to have someone you can go to for support like that? That's really critically important. So your clients need support and you need support. So what if you had our systems, our deep knowledge, our global data, our support team supporting you, not just in your podcast? but with your clients and in your business so that you can do the whole process. So you can move through that whole process and you know you've got backup. 
how much more time is going to be freed up for you so you can actually mentor your clients and do what you love. Because at every stage of business, at every stage of podcasting, guidance is absolute gold for you. The failure to guide is detrimental to the process. This is what creates a high pod fade rate. This is what creates a high business failure rate. And too often we only get someone to help us at the onset of a business. Like when we start, we don't get them to continue support throughout. We always build into every program, including the one I'm going to talk to you about today, that support is built in throughout, that there is continuing education, that there is something there, there's support groups, there's support team. They're always there for you because we believe that is the key to success. That is what defies the odds and how we do that. Um, What if, the help that we gave you helps that got that you got setting up your show was totally flawed. So the person who helped you set up your show or whoever you relied on, and believe me, a lot of people I talked to relied on Pat Flynn and John Lee Dumas, but today John and Pat don't start new podcasts of their own. They don't start new podcasts every single day. Their information is outdated. And it is hurting the podcasts that are launching under their formula, but, and it's not that they're bad guys. It's, it's just that they've moved on and they're doing other things in their business. Pat Flynn's working on growing an entire business. So he's working on email marketing and webinars and all the different aspects of business building that he had in place, which made his podcast successful and his podcast business or coaching business successful at the time, but he's not really actively coaching anymore in a way that is deep understanding of what's going on. So if you followed his model and started your podcast, which I did follow his model and started our first podcast eight years ago, but not one single one of the podcasts that we, I started since then has followed that same model. It's had to change every single time. So if you're riding your whole entire business on a shaky foundation of outdated information and processes, then are you going to be able to achieve sustainable success for your clients? Are you even going to be able to achieve launch success for those clients so that you can get referrals? The other typical veil we see is that we don't think about the obstacles and pivots and we don't get help when they come in front of us. We think we got this, we've got all the skills. This is just an obstacle. This is a mountain I have to climb, but we don't often get someone we can talk to in that process who may have said, I found a path around that mountain. It's faster. It's less likely to be a risk. And here it is. So that's what we want to build in for you. This sort of the safety net of absolute guidance for you and your clients. So that in that process, you can all achieve absolute success. Because that's the profit acceleration, right? We're all looking for. We want profit accelerator. We want to go from a proven success system so that we get success speed at the end of the day. And so we want to talk about acceleration opportunities. You know, what do those look like? And if you had these exact models, could you up your referral rate? Um, could you make sure your pot, your lifestyle and your business fit together? Make sure that that's going on for you so that you love this business. And we want to get you in a growth plan that's really getting you, um, you know, from having too few clients, but also not getting you too many clients because that's as big a problem. Trust me, we found that one. Um, So, you know, we want to get you to this path where you're having more successful clients, more referrals faster, and less money spent on marketing and lead generating. Wouldn't that be exactly nice? So are you ready to hear what this program is designed to do? I want to make sure you're all there. So please type yes in the chat so I can see what we're, where we are and everything. Okay, great. We've got people who can't wait. Wonderful. Thank you. Okay, great. So let's talk about what it takes to stand out and be profitable and what's in the Podetized Certified Strategist Program. The program was designed to accelerate you and your business into the being top podcast strategist with proven systems, scalable model, and an opportunity for lead flow and high authority association. This is what we built into the program. And we've been working on this program all year. So we're really excited about it. Um, We call it a certified strategist program instead of a certified coach program, because we're elevating the level of work that you do so you can charge more, number one, and number two, so that this is actually more aligned with what we want clients to think about. What we want them to think about is being strategic about their podcast, not being coached into doing a podcast, which puts a lot more of it on them. So we want to be able to build this sort of more success model of we're providing strategy 
strategy, guidance, and the plan. And then the execution is going to happen for them either through all the systems and processes that we have for them or the systems and processes that you're helping to support them with. So we also have the bonus, of course, in the certified strategist is that it's potatized certified strategist, right? So you get to stand on my shoulders. You get to stand on Tom's shoulders. You get to stand on the shoulders of all of our 97 uh, staff members around the world, right? You get that to be more credible with your authority, um, with the value you can provide compared to your competitors. And they're popping up everywhere. Basically, I hear podcast coaches um, hanging out their shingle every single week. So I'm hearing it all the time. So there's a lot of done it once coaches, coaches out there, right? Those that started one single podcast think they've got a success formula and don't even have success being a coach already or already having that in their own background. So they have a lot more failure points as well because they don't essentially understand what it takes to really coach clients. They don't have the skill sets in that. So not only are you going to stand out as a certified strategist, but you're also going to be able to have the benefit of being able to continually earn directly from us and learn directly from us and our team on which we help people who might be in that sort of gray area where you don't have all the skill set for either sales, lead generation, or for coaching for your ability to, hand, to do those services. So we're going to provide all of that in this process. And I know you're thinking, oh my gosh, that actually sounds overwhelming because that's a lot of things. But we promise you that it's not going to be overwhelming because although this has a lot in it and I'm going to talk about it, we're doing a parallel, parallel eight-week business and podcast tactic strategy program. So you're going to get tactics and technical at the same time that you're going to get business building. They're going to overlap and any kind of work in the process that you're going to do is going to help build your business and increase your technical skills at the same time. So we've designed them to work together. So here are some of the things that we've got in our program. We're going to work on profit factors, where your profit factor is, where the most profitability is going to happen for you. I can't tell you, uh, I can't give you exactly my profit factor because and while I, I told you that the referrals are a key one for you, they may or may not be the right one for you. They may or may not be the biggest one for you. And that could have to do with how you're running your business. So we need to analyze, help bring you those factors and determine what's going to be the best one for you. We also want to put in place pod fade prevention points for you because we know where they're going to come because we know where clients quit, where they go dark, where they don't show up. We know that because we've launched a thousand shows. So we, we see the pattern of where that happens. You might see it in isolation and think, oh, I have an answer, build a whole program and determine that was isolated to that single client. We don't, we know where these pod fade prevention systems need to be put in place because we see a pattern of lots of people doing it. There are always anomalies in the group, right? It's going to happen. And we've weeded that out in our prevention process. We also need to talk about your pricing and program setting. You know, I'm actually an expert in doing this. We, we look at pricing from cost basis to market basis. So we really want to take a look at that is how competitive is your pricing, but also how profitable is that pricing from the cost that it's costing you to produce this so that we can set a proper program together. And that program can also include services and ongoing support and some of the other things that you're going to have access to. And it's built into your pricing so that it doesn't feel like you're nickel and diming your client, or you're moving them on to the next phase in, a, in an ugly way, or you're leaving them in lurch, right? We also want to give you the ability to have your own team expansion, not just being able to tap into and use ours, of which we'll share with you, but we want you to be able to have an ability to grow your own team without having to do full training programs. So we're going to look at what that looks like for you as well within this process. Bootstrap marketing. Look, I'm not going to assume you have the budgets we have to market. I'm going to assume you are doing it just like we were, and we are coming up with all kinds of bootstrap marketing methods that work. The ones that we tossed aside didn't work. And there's reasons for that, because sometimes these bootstrap marketing techniques that people are out there teaching you are too passive to get you the right fit clients. So we're going to talk about the ones that aren't that get you the right fit clients at the end of the day, because these are the marketing efforts you should spend your time on. We're going to talk about powering your sales training so that you can power your own training or maybe your team members. We are bringing you in this group uh, the 
trainer who trained our sales team, who trained Tom personally, who still is involved in training every single one of our employees with their communication skills. And as things go on, he'll provide more and more of this training as we move forward into the program. But this, in the initial eight week, you're going to have a whole session, a whole week where we're working on sales training and we'll be working with Bill Sterling is his name. And he's amazing. Um, but he doesn't really do this for solopreneurs. Like this isn't really something that you probably afford or get from him. He works for big corporations and company and, and, uh, and organizations, um, government organizations and things like that. But he's here because of Podetize, because of our company, he, we're able to get him to do this and provide this for you. We also have a success partnership that we want to build. We want to, we want to, uh, get your success partnership going so that you have a partnership between you and I. Um, and that is really critically important for us because we want to make sure that our success and your success go hand in hand together. So we want to talk about what that's going to work like, what that's going to look like, what ability of things can we supplement for you so you can be more successful and what actual things you can su uh, supplement for us as well in terms of that strategy piece, in terms of great, um, great clients that you're creating into this marketplace. We're also going to give you contracts and terms. These are some things that we know are proven. These are all going to come through in the process. So we're going to share all the details on all of these different things for you. Remember, I told you we we're also going to do this business and tech side by side. So here's the tech things that are going to go side by side with this. Now, sometimes you are going to think that though, like I know how to set up a show, but do you know how to set up a show for success? Are you sure? Because Tom and I spent the entire She Podcast event doing nothing but um, host in the hot seat where we would review and audit people's shows and not one single one of them exceeded, you know, uh, almost every single one of them, I should say, almost every single one of them fell into at least three of six mistakes, massive mistakes that they were making that was keeping them from getting more listeners, like pre absolutely preventing them from getting served up in the search engine that is Apple. So people don't know how to set up sh so shows for success. We're going to share all those details with you so that you have all those good skills to be able to utilize with your customers and your clients. Hosting matters. We're going to talk about hosting because not all hosts are created equal. Everyone thinks that, oh, it's just a syndication. It's just serving it out to the world. It's just a machine. And it's not because sometimes those machines don't provide any support don't provide any services, don't provide any details on how you might use them and what you might be able to do with them that is strategic. So that's what we're going to talk about. And when we talk about hosting, um, we're, we're talking about streamlined production. Of course, we're like experts in the streamlined production. Absolutely, right? So that's something that we want to make sure that you um, understand and have at your access because some of your clients are not going to be able to just handle editing some of your clients aren't going to be able to handle all the parts of it. Some of you don't provide graphic design services. Some of you don't provide social media assets. All of those things need to come through this process so that you have that full program. We also want to talk about a podcast home boost. That's um, your website at the end of the day. We want to talk about that because so few people actually know how to manage the website side of things. We have an entire web management team. We actually build that in. We are in every single client's websites every single day. It's a part of our process. We know what works there and what doesn't. And that's like having a whole separate web development business in addition to everything. You guys don't need that, but you need to understand what's critical in that process. And that's what we're, we're going to talk about in our tech intensive on podcast home boost. We're going to talk about podcast auditing, how you can look at a show, how you know if someone's doing something well, if they're not, so that you don't replicate bad practices. And then we're going to talk about recording best practices, because I know you guys all think you're, you're recording. Some of you have studios. Some of you have plans for all that pre-production and helping and everything. And that's fantastic. But so often we forget about our clients are not as tech savvy as we are. They're not capable of doing all the things that we want them to do. And um, we need to have different levels of recording best practices so that we can bring them. We're going to bring them to you really easily, quickly, plus equipment that we use. So we're going to share all our equipment with you. So much more. You know, we have much more in this process. We're going to offer weekly Q&A sessions. Um, uh, during the first two months. Um, and then after that, you're going to get a year long mastermind group with Tom and I, we've got a revamp, revamp and boost of your podcast. So we're going to take a look at that. As I talked about profit prep for your pricing and packages, we have 24 
plus, like I'm probably like my list is now 36. So we're going to have to add to them, but we have advanced podcasting topics. So after you're done with this eight week, we, you have access to all kinds of topics that you'll be able to consume a couple per month that are going to help you continually grow your business, learn something that you could apply, or you get a client with a certain issue and you'll be able to search through our, our topics and be able to find something that you can quickly consume and get some best practices and some strategic help so that you can be better at what you do with your clients. So that's our, our continuing education for you. We have adjunct adjunct support staff. We have systems for you. We have access to our data and research. Remember, I told you that when we see patterns over the thousand podcasts or the 10,000 episodes we're producing, right? When we see these patterns emerging, we've got data. We've got, we've got research on it. We do not share that with the general public. We keep that within that, but you're going to get access to that as well. And we're going to have PR and speaking opportunities for you because frankly, I can't be everywhere around the country. I get speaking engagements offered to me pretty much every week I get two or three offered. I can't do all those virtual summits. I can't do them all. They're not going to serve my business well at what we're doing. I'm working on PR for a growing business in the podcast industry at a certain stage. I'm not doing PR that is leading to speaking opportunities to get clients. That is not actually my purpose right now. So we've got them and we've got opportunities for you in your region. So you don't have to travel far. So you could do them virtually if you want to. So we've got that all going on for you as well. And those will be at access to you once you graduate. We have future, future earnings for you on your clients. So what happens if you bring clients who host with us and come through and within a year use our production services, you're going to earn commission. You're going to earn commission at the high rate we pay our salespeople. So you're going to get that when people come through the process, no matter how long it takes them to buy in that first year. Because sometimes they just think they can go it alone. They think they're going to be fine with it. And then they don't. So that's earnings for you. So you're not going to lose out because they came, they came through us. They hosted with us and then they found out what we did. No, that's all going to be built into the process so that you'll continually earn on them. And you don't have to do anything. That's the best part, right? You're going to get a podetized listing as a preferred partner. Once we establish that success partnership and where you want to play within that, you're going to get a customized profile within that. So you'll be listed right on your website. Plus you'll have our podetized, I'm going to show you in a minute, a certified strategist seal, and you'll be able to use that on your website as well. So we're going to have that cross-linking back and forth, giving you that high authority value digitally and that digital connection to us. And we're going to have a path to lead generation that's just for you. Now you have to get through this certification and you have to pass a few other tests with us to make sure that the clients that you're bringing through that are working through the process, that you can serve them at a level at which we believe is going to be on par with, with everything that you've learned and everything that we provide. And once that happens to you, we got that path to giving you leads every single month through our own system. Because one, as we set up this path and this marketing program that we, we've kicked off, we're going to have more leads than we know what to do with. Then we're going to be able to service in terms of the setup side of it. We're going to be just fine on our hosting. We can scale that to millions of users. We have no problems there, but we're not going to be okay in the setup process with all the one-on-one -on -one without you. That and we so we we have an invested interest in making sure that you get to this lead generation stage. So it's on us to make sure that that happens. But it's also on you, of course, to make sure that you get through the intensive and you do the things you need to do that. And you're going to have our certificate seal and brand licensing that's going to come through for you. So essentially, you're going to be able to trade on the podetized name. So the real question we have to ask ourselves and, and you need to ask yourselves and we need to ask about you is, are you a right fit for this process? Are you uncoachable? Are you afraid of change? Are you set in your ways? You're so sure your system is exactly the right system. Or are you just like, no, I don't want a system. I like winging it. I'm comfortable just, you know, doing my thing. And, or those who just don't want to build a business here, you just are comfortable with the few clients you have, and you don't want to turn it into a business where you're, you have a continual lead for, where you have all of that working for you. If that's not what you want, then you're probably not right for us. And, you know, we only have six spots open right now.